Uh, and maybe just a few thoughts about kind of impact it has had on your intellectual journey, on your professional uh, career path. Uh, well, I was an intern at CHS for a year um, post-college, and I would say that it's been fundamental to my experience in classics. Um, the exposure that I've gotten to various scholars, uh, the lessons that I learned working on the Homer, mul Homer multi-text project, and also learning about Homer and Homeric reception have been influential on my research. So tell us a little bit more about the research, uh, research that you're doing on the underworld. Well, I look at the underworld as a space for authorial commentary, and I start with Homer and I start with uh, Odyssey 11, but I, I argue that there are many underworld scenes in Homer, mm -hmm. and, they've, and that they all are influential on later writers, and that the writers, and Homer and later writers are trying to create a network of texts uh, through underworld scenes. So can you maybe give us an example of an underworld scene that you're, you have identified that might not appear as an underworld scene to maybe a novice reader? Yeah, if you look in Odyssey 4, uh, there's the conversation with Menelaus, and he talks about the promise uh, that he will go to the Elysian field. It's our first reference in Greek literature to the Elysian field. We don't know where exactly it came from, uh, but it's sort of an underworld scene that kind of goes under the radar but Menelaus has promised this blessed afterlife, sort of a life afterlife, and that's very ex really exciting. And so I connect that to the promise of an afterlife that appears in Book 24's underworld scene to Achilles, where he lives with other heroes in this blessed space where they're having conversation and enjoying eternal uh, conviviality. So can you tell me, when did you first start getting interested in classics and studying Homer? I took heroes. I took heroes with Greg Naj, and it just blew my mind, it really did. Um, just talking about the hero's journey and talking about how he comes up against different systems of values and how those values change, and then how that hero, uh, different hero, like Achilles or Odysseus, how they become um, re-envisioned with each generation and even into the present day. So that course was really influential for me pursuing classics at all. And yourself as an, in, as a, teacher now. I mean, do you find that your students are eager to engage with this content? Um, how, how do you see it sort of changing their perspective uh, on the world, on their intellectual path in their own studies? Yeah, I teach, um, I teach Homer and Heroes and Epic uh, very similarly to Greg Nagy, and I think that um, I relate individuals' experience to Achilles' experience, Odysseus' experience. People, you know, I let them know, Telemachus is not He's about the same age as a college student. And so different, I, I invite students to find their own narrative in the narratives of the ancient texts. And so for example, when it, we read you know, Odysseus's journey as sort of a journey of refugees and colonists and you know, what do they find in each place? And I think that that's something uh, that I learned from Greg Naj, but then also I work with a lot of technology in my classrooms and sort of getting the Greek myths and the stories out to people through technological tools. And that's something I definitely learned at the CHS, was how to incorporate technology with humanities. Suzanne, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate this conversation. Uh, we look forward to learning more about your research and to sharing that with the wider community at CHS. Thank you.